Hello everybody, well it's myself, Chris Payton, here yet again. Um, I've basically just come on to talk about uh, another wee book that I've just produced um, called Discover Scottish Civil Registration Records. Now, this is actually the third um, Scottish title that I've published for a company called Unlock the Past, which is based in Australia. So the other two are, I did one on Scottish church records and Scottish land records. But what each of these um, books is essentially is a kind of a, a more in-depth guide on one particular aspect of an area of genealogical interest from Scotland. So the latest one, Scottish Civil Registration Records, what that attempts to do is we, we all know that Scotland's people is kind of the, the website you go to to start uh, with your genealogical research. Um, because it's got birth, marriage and death records, and it's got census records, um, and a few church records and wills and things like that. But what I've done in this latest book is actually go a wee bit further than just saying what's on Scotland's people. I've tried to actually explain a bit about the context about some of the records that are available. So for example, why civil registration took longer to start off in Scotland. Um, the details that obviously you find in the records, I mentioned those. But I also talk about some of the, the processes you had to go through. So for example, if you had a child, you obviously had to register the, the birth of that child. But how, how quickly did you have to register the birth of that child? What happened if you didn't register the birth of that child? Why is it that sometimes when you're on Scotland's people, you actually find the birth of a child registered twice in two different districts? It just seems completely bonkers. Well, I've had a wee look and tried to pull all that together to explain the kind of the what went around the process of registration. Um, another thing about birth, for example, is once you registered the birth of a child, that wasn't the end of the process because you then had to get the child vaccinated um, from the from the 1860s onwards. Um, so, again, what did you have to do to get the child vaccinated? What about things like conscientious objection? Could you avoid getting your child vaccinated? What records exist to say whether your child was vaccinated? Um, and so we look at all these different areas, births, marriages and deaths. Marriages is a really fun one, um, simply because Scotland did marriage differently to the rest of the UK. All you needed to do in Scotland to be married was simply to consent to, with somebody to, to be married. Um, you didn't need parental permission. Uh, you didn't actually even need a minister of the cloth or, or somebody to witness you actually being married. You could actually be married by simply saying you were married. Believe it or not, it was marriage by declaration. Now, there are ways and means that if you did that, that you could register that with the state. But in Scotland, for example, we didn't have things like um, marriage in a civil registry office until 1940. And yet in England, it was over 100 years before that that they introduced it in 1837. So why was that? Well, I go into all of that. Um, I also talk about the fact that in, with the irregular forms of marriage that exist, uh, there's one form of marriage which is known as uh, by habit and repute, which was nominally banished um, as, as recently um, as the uh, 2006 in the, the Family Law Scotland Act. Actually, there, there is still marriages in Scotland that are constituted by habit and repute. They weren't made illegal from that date, they just, from that date onwards, um, you can't consider yourself to, to come together to be married. It has to be before that date that such unions are still recognised. There's all these wee things that I've kind of gone into. But not just looking at births, marriages and deaths, but looking at things like adoption and divorce. Um, also the fact that Scotland is part of the United Kingdom um, benefits from the registration systems elsewhere in, in Britain and indeed in Ireland. You'll find Scots went everywhere. So although we didn't start here until 1855, there may be records, particularly in England, at the General Register Office to go back to 1760, believe it or not. Um, or 1761. It's all to do whether they were overseas um, in service with the, of the British Empire or the British Army, all that kind of stuff. So there's lots of records that go beyond what's on Scotland's people, um, which may include the birth, marriage and death of, of your ancestor. But also, as I say, I, I try to get more into kind of the, the raison d'etre behind a lot of the, the records that were generated, why they were generated, how they were generated, what happens if they weren't generated. Um, why doctors got really peeved with the introduction of registration of death, for example, even though they were calling for it. Well, it's because there were things that were introduced in Scotland that weren't introduced in England, um, and they weren't too happy up here about that for, for a short time until it was resolved. So there's a lot of that going on. So that's 
the latest one. It's called Discover Scottish Civil Registration Records. Um, it's actually published by Unlock the Past, which is a, an Australian company. Um, they're based in Adelaide. And the you can get the book in two different ways. There's a print version of it, which you can order up from a company called Gould Genealogy, which is um, www.gould.com.au. Uh, but you can also get an e-version of the book um, in a PDF format that you can download and read on a tablet or on your PC. And you get that from a company called Gen eBooks. So it's uh, http colon slash slash gen hyphen ebooks.com. And that's actually a cheaper version, uh, particularly if you live on this side of the planet in Scotland, you know. So that would cost you, I think this one's about $7, Australian dollars, for example, in a PDF format whereas the book version is seventeen dollars um, Australian dollars so they are available you can actually get some of um, of my books through unlock the past in Scotland through Aberdeen and North East Scotland Family History Society they, they've certainly stocked the first two books the the Scottish church records and the land records books um, I'll just give you a quick blast about what each of these is about as well um, Scottish church records possibly one of my all-time favorite subjects within Scottish genealogy. I used to work in television uh, many years ago and I actually made a TV series once about the, the history of the church in Scotland and I've just been fascinated by it ever since because everybody just kept splitting from everybody else and, and it makes it quite fun looking for records. But this particular book, um, again, it goes into a lot more depth about the, the churches, um, in particular the Church of Scotland. It tells you how to find um, records of the Church of Scotland, it tells you about the history of the Church of Scotland and why some ancestors may not be so easily found as others. They may belong to denominations that broke away from the Church of Scotland. Um, all sorts of other records, things about the church courts um, and, and all that kind of stuff, the secessions, the 1851 religious census of Scotland, which a lot of people have never heard about. Um, again, I talk a bit about that. Um, and lots of search uh, tips and sort of techniques and things. Things like when you find a marriage, for example, on Scotland's people, I always say to people, always check the Kirk Session records. Even if the marriage itself looks completely kosher and fine and nothing seems to be wrong with it, check the Kirk Session records. They're the business side of things, the church court. Um, because sometimes you find there's a wee bit more to the eye with some events that are recorded in the, the OPR records, the old parish records. So that's just packed with tips. And again, that's another one you can find through Gould's genealogy. Um, and then the Scottish Land Records book is a similar thing. Again, it's a much more in-depth look at various types of records that can help with your Scottish genealogy. Um, Scotland, again, I, I mean, I bang about, on about this all the time, but Scotland is very different to the rest of the UK because of Scots law, which is different to English law. And that's particularly the case with land records because within Scotland we had feudalism um, up until the age of, uh, up until 2004. And feudalism was where you had somebody above you who was a superior and you were the wee vassal beneath them that had to pay a kind of tribute um, once or twice a year called a few duty. Um, and this kind of relationship between vassals and superiors was something that only ended within the last decade. And it's a very different way of uh, transactions being recorded um, within Scotland compared to England. Feudalism disappeared in the Middle Ages, um, by and large, down in England. So we've got unique records like Saisons, um, not Sassines, not Sazines, Saisons, um, which can record inheritances, uh, land transactions through purchase or exchange, um, all sorts of wee, wee things that you'll find in the Saison records. But it's not just about Saison records, it's about tax records and things that you've never heard about before. Um, and of course inheritance, which is a major, major thing in Scotland. Again, in Scotland you couldn't leave property in a will until the late 1860s. Very different to England, that's been the case since the Middle Ages, you know. So if you couldn't leave it in a will, where did you leave it? Well, you use different records, services of heirs, precepts of Clara Constat, all these kind of things to, to try and record um, inheritance and the right to inherit. So I go into all sorts of detail on that as well. So these three books, um, that's the latest one, Discover Scottish Civil Registration Records, then we've got Scottish Church Records, Discover Scottish Church Records, and Discover Scottish Land Records. Um, Unlock the Past actually have a wide range of books and, and titles as well. It's not just publishing my books on Scotland. Um, they've got all sorts of bits and bobs. I've got one here, for example, by Shona Hicks, who's um, an Australian, 
uh, called It's Not All Online. This is one I picked up in Australia a couple of years back. Um, but there's a, another book, for example, Rosemary Kopick has done a book on Scotland's people, the actual website itself you can have a look at. Alan Stewart has done a book um, on research in London and Middlesex ancestors. And there's lots of guides for Australia and, and other parts of the world and, and other subjects as well. So um, Gen eBooks is probably the best way to access those from here in Britain. Uh, which is the the ebook website that I mentioned earlier? So you can certainly um, they're, they're not all online yet. Some of them are still going online, but you can either buy those or buy the original books themselves from Gould Genealogy, uh, which, as I say, is gould.com.au. Now, just one final thing I'm going to mention, just while I'm on the blower about Unlock the Past, is that Unlock the Past also organise a series of cruises, genealogy cruises. Now, I did one. I think it was two years ago from New Zealand to Australia and got a chance to see lots of various places but the actual cruise itself is like a floating conference, a genealogy conference and we'd speakers from all over the shop um, on the cruise that I did and I'm going to be doing another one next February from Australia. We start in Sydney and work our way down to Tasmania and Melbourne, Adelaide, a few other places. Um, if you're interested in the Unlock the Past cruises you can go to their website called unlockthepastcruises.com.au and that's worth a look because although at the moment Unlock the Past has been organising cruises in Australia and New Zealand, they're coming north. They're coming our way. So there's a few e things happening over the next couple of years that if you want to attend a genealogy cruise and board it in England, and sail the oceans blue, well, keep an eye on that website because there's going to be some fairly big developments fairly soon. Um, I actually had a chance to talk to Alan Phillips, who runs the company, just a few days ago down in Newcastle, and it's all very exciting. So keep an eye on unlockthepastcruises.com as well, um, and that should be able to help you out. And I'm just going to make sure that I've got the address right. It's .com, not .com, A-U, .com, unlockthepastcruises.com. And they are a complete blast. If I give you an idea, when we did the cruise in New Zealand to Australia two years back, we were on, I've actually got a postcard up here, but this is the, the boat we were on. It's called the Volendam. And the Volendam was, it was like a floating hotel. It was unbelievable. But I actually took my wife and my kids with me, and they have no interest in genealogy whatsoever, and they had a blast because they had a cruise, and I went off and worked every day. But in the evening they would go up and play football on the deck with the, the Malaysian crew on a tennis court. Um, they would go to the cinema. Um, it was a great holiday for them. So you can bring your partner along and if your partner's not interested, fine, let he or she go off and watch a film. And you go and learn about dead people, like the rest of us, um, and how to find them. Um, or you can bring your partner along and introduce them to a lecturer or two and just watch the look on his face or her face as they slowly become interested. And then you realise that you're not alone in your addiction with genealogy. Um, they're good fun. The cruise that we're doing next year is on a ship which makes this look like a lifeboat. It's huge. It's absolutely massive. Um, and it's got some lots of, uh, lots of good facilities and some great speakers. Um, when I do go next year, I'm actually going to be doing a few talks on shore as well. And one of the other speakers who's coming along is Thomas McEntee from the United States. So we're going to be traipsing from one end of the continent to the other, um, talking to people about um, various things. And there'll be other speakers as well. So there's a talks tour uh, parallel to the cruise. And when we stop off at a, a destination, we'll go off and do a few talks. Everyone else will go and see a few sites. And then we'll all jump on board the boat again and carry on the conference at sea. So they are a lot of fun, uh, hopefully we'll see you there, but as I say, the, the key publisher behind it is Unlock the Past, they, they do the cruises, they do the books, and they do all sorts. They haven't invented kitchen sinks yet, but I'm sure they're on it. Anyway, um, I hope that gives you a, a, an idea about some of the stuff I've been doing with Unlock the Past and some of the books that are available. Um, but as I say, the latest one I'm really plugging at the moment is Discover Scottish Civil Registration Records, uh, but these are awfully fun too. So. Uh, hope that helps and uh, I'll speak to you again I'm sure at some point.